I don't think I've ever heard you really expand on this. Uh, and I do know that at the time you said, I want to focus on a Christian solo career. Uh, so why did you step away from the band? Because it's been many, many years since you were the front man for Saliva. And I think, you know, people thought you were going to go on to your own solo career. You certainly could have had a huge solo career. When you think of a song like Hero with Chad Kroger, you are not someone who needs to be pigeonholed into this like hard rock or new metal stereotype of what Saliva has put in, even though I think that band is so much more versatile. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'd love to hear like, what was the reason that you stepped away and were out for so long? Um, I mean, I, I remember seeing that video that went up on on the internet of you singing in a church and people are like well this is just so strange to see this is not what we think of when we think of Josie Scott from Saliva so <laughs> right. I'd love to hear the full story because it's so many years that you've been away well you know I think I got to a point where for me personally I just got to a point where I had to weigh um I had to count the cost of what uh, I was doing in my life. And I was in a really scary, unhealthy place. Um, I had just, I think we had all, if I'm completely honest, I think we had all just been at the party for too long. Um, I had went down a really dark road and, um, I was going to this witch doctor type <laughs> therapist that had me on all kinds of high powered, uh, antidepressants. And I'm not speaking bad of, of antidepressants. They can certainly help someone. I'm not, uh, trying to Tom Cruise you at all, but, um, I was just on the, uh, a, a, a lot of the wrong medicines that weren't right for me. Um, things that that you know schizophrenic medications and just crazy wild prescriptions that I had no business being on and I was I was just trying to fly the plane man I was trying to to land the plane in a safe field or whatever and the stick was broken man I, I couldn't navigate my life anymore and I had just uh I just had a little girl and uh, my daughter um, Jordan was born in 2011 and we had had some complications with, with her. Uh, we almost lost her. You know, she was uh, born with uh, this really bad, uh, she had inhaled some amniotic fluid and had, had some really bad pneumonia and we almost lost her and just a lot of, things were intersecting in my life that were red flags or like, you know, you need to, you got to start taking care of some of this stuff or you're, or you're not going to make it. You know what yeah. I mean? And I, I just, it was a hard decision. You know, it was one of the hardest decisions I ever made in my life, but you know, I, I talked about it with, um, you know, my, my wife and I talked about it with, uh, a spiritual advisor of mine at the time. And, uh, I just realized that I had to, I had to step away and get myself healthy. Uh, because like they say on the airplane, they say, put on yeah. your oxygen mask before you put on everybody else's. And I was struggling to put on everybody else's oxygen mask. And I, I wasn't taking care of myself and I, I and I was about to black out and, uh, I had to, I had to make the decision to step away and, and get healthy. And I, I, uh, I had to, you know, pour all those medications, uh, down the toilet and just, um, go through that valley, you know, like did, they did say, you, what, I'm sorry, I was just going to ask, like, okay. did you have a change of perspective? Because when people do think of saliva, they do think of like the whole sex, drugs, rock and roll lifestyle that is embedded <laughs> in the music. And then to do a 180 of that and say, I'm going to focus on having a Christian solo music career. Was it just like, 
man, this music that I wrote 10, 15 years ago, like this is no longer who I am. This is no longer the image I want to put out there. Was it that type of thing? Like, cause we, we saw that with like head from corn and, and other guys who have been like, yeah, this is not the image I want to put out there anymore. Was there some of that? I, I believe that had some, I believe that had something to do with it, but um, I, I, I think I, because when, when I first left the band, they immediately put that press release out about me becoming a, a Christian solo artist. And that was not the reason I left. I mean, I think time uh, has shown everybody that, that that was absolutely not the reason I left. That was just, a good answer to to give to the press at that time and I never really understood why the people that were managing us at the time felt the need to 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 put that out there um you know I am a Christian uh and I had uh explored uh with a couple of uh record company guys there in Nashville about maybe doing uh a Christian solo album or something like that but I basically was told that there were a lot of snakes on that side of the fence as well and and uh, oh, yeah. basically basically got which there there are anywhere you know yeah no I mean, I, mean I, I I mentioned head from corn I've read head from corn's books and and he had that same experience where he's like these guys who I thought were you know my brothers in Christ were ripping me off of my money and yeah I think that you do see snakes right. in, in all aspects of life and and people you know, want to suck in these people who have some type of fame or some type of notoriety and leech off of them in, in any aspect, whether it's this music world or Christian music world or elsewhere. So I understand that. And, and you know, uh, after stepping away and, and getting healthier and uh, sort of getting back on my feet, I, I got to spend some time at home with my wife and with my children and I was just like I just want to be a regular guy for a while man I, I just want to be a father sure, and I want to sure. be a husband and I want to watch my little girl uh grow up um my my son was uh you know very young at the time justice was very young at the time um and, you know, he was getting physically sick before I would go on the road and it was just breaking my heart, you know, and I, I never wanted to bring children into this world just to upset them and break their yeah. hearts and, and make them sick with the life with the life that I was living. So it, it was more about me getting a taste of just being a dad and just being a husband. Sure. And I was like, wait a minute this is really really cool man and uh so i you know once the blinders were off and i got off all that fall i got i came out of that fog you know what i mean that all those medications had me in i was like well this is pretty cool i think i could enjoy this and uh i just relished in the fact that i was uh, blessed to get to be this woman's husband and blessed to get to be the father of these kids. And I just wanted to focus on being a dad and the music never stopped. I have a phone right now that's full of songs and it started around 2011 and 12 of just song after song ideas that would come to me and I would uh, write them down because I've never been one of those guys that sat down and, and said okay we're gonna write a song and you know and just choose I can't just sit down and do it yeah. like that it, it doesn't have to be planned it, it's something that just comes through me Elvis said one time he said it's not from me it's through me I just have the best seat in the house <laughs> that's great and you know th this audience I swear to you man they're gonna love hearing this story because there is such a similarity between your story and Chris Peranto who's usually here but the big difference between you guys is for you it was like life on the road and for Chris it was life deployed whether as an army ranger or CIA contractor and he was doing it up until his late 40s and he was like, and he same thing as a young kid. And he's like, I want to be back home with my family. And Chris has talked about on the podcast. He had several times he wanted to take his life. And he was like, I need to fix myself. I need to get back to that person that I'm meant to be. And now it's like, he's with his wife, with his kids, where they live in Kansas. 
And he's not someone you see now on Fox News all the time or CNN. And he's like, because this is not really what I want to do anymore. He does his motivational speeches on the road, does this podcast with me. That's actually why he can't be here. He's, he's out on the road doing a motivational speech. But yeah, very similar lifestyle, I think, in terms of that. Although he's a guy who lived it out in combat. You were out on the road touring. But I think, yeah, being away and not having a place to call home and not being with your family and not being that father, it, it has to take a toll on you. I, I totally understand that. <laughs>